Well, it's getting close to 6.30 in the evening. We've just come off air. We finished the F1 forum. I hope you pressed red and joined us for that. And then we have to pre-record all of the links for the BBC Three Highlights programme. We've done that as well. And so if you take a look around us, you can see the sun is setting. Everyone in the TV compound clearing up, finishing off their day's work. Eddie Jordan's just been chatting to Sunil. Sunil, give us a wave. That's uh, Sunil, one of the VT producers who chooses a lot of the music. He's been filming with some Red Bull flags, so he's returning those to Red Bull. How was the weekend from your perspective, Eddie? Because people see what you do on the TV. What do you do the rest of the weekend at a Grand Prix? Not much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'd like to put my own interpretation on this. I make him look good. So all the grannies, all the young kids, everyone watching the program, he would be a shadow of himself without David Coulthard and Eddie Jordan. We make him look even better than he is. I've been trying to say that for weeks. Thank you for doing it for me. Well done this weekend, Eddie. We'll see you in a bit. Now, come up here uh, because this is our production office because obviously when we're on the road, we've still got scripts to write and decisions to make and shows to prepare. And, right, I think this is uh, them acting up to the camera. It's not normally this busy in here. Look at this. Everybody on the phone, Willow typing, <laughs> clearly typing nothing. Um, I'll just go around and introduce you to people. This is Anne, the production manager. Hello, Anne. Yeah, very good. Uh, this is uh, Sarah over here. Hi, Sarah. Uh, this is Boydie, one of the VT producers. So these guys produce the films. Of course, you know Lee McKenzie well. Uh, this is Rachel. We've been nice to her because she's Anne's boss. And she's come to see Anne for the weekend. And then turning around, you can see Eddie just sort of getting in the way. Uh, and Tony may be one of the editors. And Steve Aldous. Now, Steve is the assistant editor, so he hangs out with David and I during the races. What's it like standing off camera and sort of watching the mayhem unfold during the programme? It's very exciting and I hope that we can uh, get some of that across so that the viewers realise just how exciting it is for all of us. Keeping EJ under control is uh, my biggest challenge of the weekend, to be honest. That's the difficult part of the whole weekend, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and well done for saving me from that uh, Toyota in Turkey. I'll never forget that. Long time ago, long time ago. Long time ago, but still very grateful. Um, ironing board, you wouldn't have seen it, but David Coulthard was busy ironing uh, his shirt for the show this morning and the essential BBC Sport umbrellas that EJ was using to keep out of the sun during today's race. I'll bring you through here into our kitchen. Now, they say an army marches on its stomach. The BBC produce Formula One coverage on their stomach. Three fridges. And woe betide the person that puts the meat in the salad fridge and the cheese in the meat fridge. Pete, who runs the kitchen, would be furious. Um, now, I want to show you what we normally have a lot of in here. Oh, it's been mainly eaten because we're at the end of a weekend. Mark, the uh, editor, who you'll meet in a moment, loves his chocolates, and we normally have to have stacks of chocolate. But you can see that at the end of a Grand Prix weekend, there's not a lot left in the fridges, is there? It's, uh, it's been a busy one. Quick look in here. Uh, this was an edit facility throughout the weekend, but it, uh, it no longer is because it's all been cleared away. So let's go through here. My favourite is mozzarella. Ham, avocado, no bread. Because when you're standing next to David Coulthard on the TV, it's very easy to look overweight. Right, Ian, I'll help you down here because this is metal and painful. Can I see it come down the steps? There you go. Uh, this truck comes with us throughout the whole of the European season. We get very fond of this. Um, it's driven by a fantastic guy called Roger, who also holds the monitor in the pit lane. So you imagine, when we left the last race in Germany, we went home, saw our loved ones and things. Don't go back any further. Roger got in this, drove it to Hungary, and then set it up for a few days. There's some really, really hard-working people, and they spend their time dealing with all of these cables and wires. And this is a great example of the kind of knowledge that people have when it comes to technical stuff. I won't unplug any of those. No, I was going to, and the director's just thanked me for not unplugging anything. Right, some more metal steps for you to work with, Ian, as we go into the gallery. And this is really the heart of the operation over a Grand Prix weekend. Hello. Hi. Uh, Rachel, turn around this way. This is Rachel's first weekend on Formula One as our PA. So you can see not one, not two, not three, but four stopwatches to try and make sure that the programme runs to time. How did we go today? Absolutely fine. Did we? As always. Oh, of course. Because <laughs> you're a professional. As are you. Thank you very much. Right, Mark Wilkin, the editor, the boss. I just have to say, you are brilliant. It's just amazing working with you, and thanks for your input all the time. You're, you're amazing. You say some nice things, don't you? Yeah, it's because you are the boss. <laughs> it's a pleasure working with you as well, because you can take instruction. You do what you're told some of the time. But not often. You ignore quite a lot of it, especially yeah. when I had to scream at you in Monaco. But hey. What was it like seeing Murray Walker open the show today? Because Mark, I know he only looks about 21 years old, but you worked with Murray, didn't you, sort of in the 80s and 
and you saw the professional side of how to present Formula One before I came along. Yeah, no, we were doing it properly. Back from 89 through to 96, I worked on the show with Murray and James Hunt initially and then Jonathan Palmer. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. We only, we only made five minutes of telly a week in those days. We have to make about, what, ten hours these days. How does this compare? F1 Forum, the website, we've got people embedded from the BBC website with us, all of these facilities. It is a world away from what people at home were getting from Formula One 20 years ago. Yeah, we never even showed qualifying back in those days. So I think what the BBC does with Formula One now is, is, is just magnificent. The support that BBC One has shown us with the airtime that we have, uh, obviously the resources we have out here with edit suites and trucks and, and offices with kitchens in and all that stuff is, is, is fantastic. I think we produce a, a, a decent show for, uh, for everyone to watch and the audience figures show that they like what we do. Brilliant. Getting the plug in for the decent audience figures. <laughs> well <laughs> done, Mark. It's all down to you. Uh, Richard Carr, the editor. I mainly hear things from him like... Like, uh, stand by, cue. No. 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 Oh, it's not. It's that. like, stand by, cue. Go on, give us a real impression of how loud you are in the gallery. Stand by. No. Can you hear me, Jake? 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 And the answer is normally Jake. no, because something's gone wrong with my talkback. Um, it's hard to see, but take a look in there. You'll see our wonderful sound man, Andy. Hi, Andy. Give us a wave. He has the hardest job in this place, because there are so many RF frequencies and things like that that the teams uh, stick up in the pit lane, and we have to work around those. So this is the gallery. Uh, Rich is the director. He controls all of the vision, so he directs all of the different cameras. If you take a look on the screens in front of Richard, you can see Ian, and Ian is the cameraman at the moment. And it says Ian on there, because that's his name, and then all of the different feeds that come in. So you think we're on air for five hours, um, and that is the room controlling really what you see at home and this is the room that controls producing all of that stuff this is what we call uh, the edit area um, let's just have a little look at the kind of thing that goes on in here um, we've got screens and technical stuff I'm sure someone much better placed than me can tell you about it Claire Foister uh, Claire what's your job at the weekends um, I am a logger and researcher so I watch everything we film and all the practice sessions and I write down where the good bits are for producing the features and you used to work for Force India I did indeed, yes. Aerodynamics. How does this compare? A lot more fun. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, really. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Right, let's make our way out here. And we're running out of time very slightly. Oh, this man in here deserves a mention. How many years have you been involved in Formula One? This is my 14th season. Um, and uh, it's also my last uh, last race today, so uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> so you don't need this anymore, do you? Uh, I, I keep them. I keep quite a lot of them. Let's just share the photograph. Look at that. That must be at least. 20 years old. So, Dave, you probably used that when you first started in <laughs> F1. Uh, but congratulations, 14 years working on the on the road and not doing any more because this truck is being decommissioned after this, this race. This is the last uh, last Grand Prix. The truck isn't being decommissioned, still working uh, working on, but no more uh, Grand Prix for it. OK, well, thank you for all your sterling efforts and I will leave you with that because that's a memento much. of your last race. And back out here and down the steps one last time, Ian, just to really make sure that you've had a good workout. And... Just have a little look over there. Uh, those are the guys who are responsible for the satellite because obviously without a satellite sending all the information back to the UK, we wouldn't be able to produce anything. So those are our little homes for Grand Prix weekend. Lee McKenzie giving me a little wave through the office window. That's nice, Lee. Uh, we're, a, we're a very happy bunch, really. Uh, we turn up on a Thursday, we leave on a Sunday, and our mission and our aim is just to try and make Formula One as accessible and as exciting as possible for all of you. And I hope that we do the job to your approval. So thanks very much for watching this weekend, and we won't see you now for a month. So prepare yourselves for the Spa Grand Prix because we'll all be very, very full of energy. Thanks for watching the video blog and I'm now going to go and have a lie down. Bye-bye, Ian. Bye, Sam. <laughs>